Hi there, my name is Tootsie and I'm going to show you how I make a pocket diaper. I'm not saying this is the best way to make a pocket diaper, I'm just saying this is the way I do it. And I've made over a hundred of them, so I've kind of fine-tuned things along the way and this is just kind of what I've come up with. First thing I do is I cut out my three layers of fabric. I have my outer fabric, which is going to be this green Dr. Seuss. I have my pull. And I have the two of these pinned together. I use binder clips instead of pins so that I don't put holes in my pull. I have them together with the decorative side facing up and the pull with the shiny side facing down. And then I also have my inner cut all ready to go. I like to use crushed panne or pan, I'm not really sure how you say it, but it's a really soft fabric, it's stay dry for your baby's bottom, and poop does not stick to this stuff, it's awesome. So the first thing I do is I want to mark on the top where the elastic is going to go for my pocket opening. The way I do that is I fold my diaper in half, so it's kind of hard to fit the whole thing on the screen here. But I fold my diaper in half, and then I take a ruler, and this is not really very scientific. I just measure three and a half inches from the middle, and I mark it on both sides. And I'm going to do the same with my inner material, the crushed panne. I'm going to fold it in half three and a half inches from the middle and I'm gonna put my mark. So that was step one. Okay next we want to create a nice clean pocket for the inside so I'm gonna take that crushed panne I'm gonna put it with the shiny fuzzy side down and I'm gonna fold it over right at that line that I made and that's where I'm gonna start sewing it down. Hold on to the ends of your tails and go to town. Maybe you notice that this looks a little weird on my machine. That's a walking foot because this material is very stretchy. And the walking foot helps move the top and the bottom evenly. counteract some of that stretch so that's pretty helpful. When you get to your other mark and just kind of turn it and sew off to the end. So now your pocket opening will look nice and neat. Your seam looks nice and neat rather than kind of a cut edge. Okay, that was the first step. Okay, the next step is we're going to do the other part of the pocket opening on the outside fabric. So I have my ruler and my elastic here. I know that that pocket opening is going to be 7 inches wide. So to figure out how much elastic I need, I just take my elastic and hold it on one side of the ruler and stretch until I get 7 inches. And then that's where I know where to cut. For me, that's right around 4 inches for this kind of elastic. Different brands, different types of elastic are going to have different stretch. So I have my four inches of elastic here. And pull my machine towards me. And remember, I have my outside fabric and my pull pinned together with the binder clips. And I have the pull shiny side down. But for right now, it's going to be shiny side up with the print side down. And just like I did with the other piece, I'm going to find that mark that I made and that's where I'm going to sew my elastic, right on that mark, right to the inside of the pull. Hold your ends. So here's a better view of what I'm doing here. Forward and reverse, right to where that mark is. OK, 
Okay, and then I am going to find the other mark that I made on my outside, and I'm going to take my elastic and just kind of bring it over here to that line. And I'm going to tack down that side now. I go over it two times, forwards and backwards. So now, obviously my elastic is shorter than the other pieces, but that's okay. I'm going to fold this over right where I tacked on my elastic to create a nice, neat pocket opening. And I'm going to sew right over that same spot, but this time on the outside. So here's another view of what I'm doing. All I did was fold over so that I have the outer fabric showing, the pull is shiny side up, my elastic is here, and now I am going to pull this so that the elastic is nice and tight inside. I'm going to fold this over and I'm going to sew this whole thing shut. So you got to pull it real tight. Fold this side over. And there you go. You want to leave plenty of room for the elastic inside this casing. You do not want to catch your elastic. That would be a real easy way to ruin the elastic because it won't stretch if you catch it in your stitches. When you get to where you tack down the other end of the elastic, I just lift my presser foot up, pivot the whole thing, and sew right off the end. Okay, now this is where I do things maybe a little bit differently than others, but this is just kind of what I came up with to help myself stay organized and to keep things nice and neat and lined up. I have my outside piece and I'm pretty much going to refer to the pull and the outer as one piece. The pull is shiny side on the table, print side up, and I have my inner material. And I'm going to lay these two right sides together so the shiny side of the Krishpane is down towards the inside because that's the right side and I'm gonna line these guys up and I don't know about you but when I cut my pieces they're not always a hundred percent perfect I'm not a machine and I don't cut like a machine and a lot of people try to attach their snaps right now and I was getting some mistakes when I did that excuse the reach so the system I came up with involves sewing these pieces together just straight across the top so that I have a neater way to see my stamps. Okay, so we're looking at the pull side and you can see how much this panay stretched even with my walking foot. It's a pain in the butt, but it's worth it. So all I did was stitch just around the upper cover, just along the top. I'm just kind of around the corner to make it nice. And that's so that I can flip this puppy inside out, or right side out, I should say. And I can see exactly where my snaps are going to go so everything lines up nice and neat. I didn't used to do this before and I just put my snaps on before I sewed the three layers together and when the fabric shifted underneath and it stretched it would make my snaps look all crooked all of a sudden. So I came up with this way to kind of prevent that. So up next, snaps. Okay, I'm ready to mark the placement of my snaps and again I'm going to need my ruler and I've kind of 
gotten good at this, so I can kind of eyeball a little bit. But I have it all flipped. And I line up my ruler, and my pattern is pretty much exactly 12 inches across. So I just start at the 2 inch mark and put a little dot every inch straight across. If I were a measuring person, I would measure that I'm about three quarters inch in from the top. And now I'm going to put in the dots for my rye snaps. And I line the top of my ruler up with those marks I made before. And I put my first rye snap at two inches down from that. And then three and a half inches down from that first one and five inches down from the first one. And for my spacing, I just use the width of the ruler from the outside of the pattern. And that gives me a nice and even and consistent measurement, always from the outside. Again, two inches from the top mark, three and a half inches from that top mark, and five inches from the top mark. I just kind of take a look, make sure everything looks lined up. And it looks good, so I'm ready to stick on some snaps. I have a snap press, but if you don't have a snap press and you just use snap pliers, they work great too. But if you're snapping lots of diapers a week like I am, you're going to need this bad boy. Okay, so just to recap where we're at, we are putting snaps on this diaper right now. We have already sewn the outer and the pull together with this lovely elastic here. You can see on the inside, there's the elastic. And we have also done the inside fabric and sewn that shut right there. And then we have sewn them together at the front so that I can better see where my snaps are going to go so that I can make sure that they are in a straight line in relation to the top seam. So all I do is I take my awl, I poke a hole where I put my mark, flip it around to the other side, and that through the hole. And then I take one of these sockets and I stick it to the bottom die here. Lay my piece in and push. Okay, one down, a whole bunch more to go.